Welcome to Good News from El Paso. Such a wonderful day. We thank God for this day. I pray for God, pray to God to help those people who are experiencing this snow thing, losing their lights in Dallas and uh, Houston. You know, the, the God is with them and they are blessed. So welcome and today sit tight. We are going to speak something that is going to be helpful to each and every one of us to really be what we say we are and act what we say we can do. Again, welcome and God bless you. Honey, please can you welcome our wonderful audience to the program today. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yes, this is the day the Lord have made and we rejoice in it despite the weather because God is greater than that. You are loved by him. Stay warm. Stay warm no matter what. Guess what? He is your warmth. Trust in him. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word that is established forever and cannot change. And what you say is, and what you have determined must come to pass. Father, we thank you today that the Christians, and even the people who are not Christians who hear this word today, they will search their hearts and you will guide them by your Holy Ghost. That is in them, in the name of Jesus Christ, and they will all come to the understanding of the glory of God in their lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, we're going to ask uh, you a question. Are you a believer or are you an unbelieving believer? Who is an unbelieving believer? This question is answered in the Bible. And we are going to see in different areas in this Bible where it is shown that people, though they are in that room, in that enclave, in that congregation called believers, they were not believing. So are you an unbelieving believer? Let us look at the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 9 to 14. Let us see how an unbelieving believer acts. Mark chapter 16, verses 9 to 14 says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was risen alive, and had been seen of her, Believe not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residual. Neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, this actually speaks for itself. He had been with them for three and a half years. They have seen the miracles he had done. At one time or the other, they have said, hey, like when he stopped this, the, 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 uh, the storm and the raging sea, they said, this is not an ordinary man. This must be the son of God. And he told them over and over, they will kill me. But the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. But what happened when it happened? They did not believe. So, honey, today is something we really have to talk about. How do we then identify an unbelieving believer? This topic is like, yes, today, today news, because this is extremely important. There's one question that Jesus asked. When he comes back, will, you, will he see people of faith? It is extremely important that we, the Christians, we, the anointed of the Lord, are believers, not unbelieving believers. Jesus Christ reprimanded 
corrected. Actually, he rebuked. The Bible tells us, if you read it in another version, it says, Jesus rebuked the disciples for not believing those who saw him rose. So, today in this, our uh, world, today where you are, today where I'm sitting, are you a believer or unbelieving believer? It is not even a funny question. It is a serious question that you and you alone can ask yourself that question and you can have that, you can answer the question yourself. But there is a solution. How do you identify an unbelieving believer? They believe in God. They believe in Jesus. They believe that they are born again. They are, they are children of God. But when circumstances, situations, challenges, when the devil throws the dart, bam, they go, well, I don't think God is, you think God is sleeping. They don't believe God, that God is able to take them from point A to point Z, to take them from sickness to health. They even, sometimes they blame God. Oh, this sickness is from God to teach them a lesson. That's, that's nonsense. It's not from God. God cannot give you sickness that he doesn't have. Why did he send his son to the cross to bear your sicknesses and diseases and pains on his own body on the cross? Why would he turn around and give you sickness and disease? That's unbelief. See, unbelieving believers, you speak unbelief. Whether you're with your friends or you're at work or anywhere you are or something happens, what comes out of your mouth right away is unbelief. How does that happen? Let's say you bump yourself or your feet uh, on a couch. What comes out of your mouth? The world mm, voice, the world, the, the things that the world will speak that we are not going to say on this set. So you know what those things are. That means the word of God is not rooted in your heart. See, you say, well, I believe God. I believe he's the God Almighty. He can do anything. And then when, that, when the month comes for you to, receive, to pay your bill, you go, wow, man, I don't think this. You start speaking negatively. Anytime you speak negatively from what God says, God says, I provide for you. I am your healer. You say, God, I don't think this month you just can do it. The, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is able to take us from our sickness bed to a healthy life. If you say so, you say so. You need to say what God said. So, identifying unbelieving believers. Number one, believe God, but don't say what God says. You believe God, you believe what God said, but you don't act it. You believe the word of God, but you don't act it. You don't even speak it. That's unbelieving believer. Wonderful. I mean, it may sound so simple, but this is really serious and in a way it's tragic. Now, let's say for example, you, you have to, I'm gonna use some examples here, but let me say this first. The word of God can only be activated. And it's just like you apply for a credit card, they give you the credit card. They give you a limit. They say, use it. You take that card and you go to a store and it doesn't go through. Why? You never activated it. And because you did not activate it, it will not work. Say we are in a, a place now, it's a house. Let's say there's a dynamite here. A dynamite that can blow this place and scatter it up. But that dynamite, dynamite is ineffective unless it is activated. So an unbelieving believer is one who has not activated or does not activate the word of God by believing it 
and speaking it. Do you want the word of God to be active in your life? Be a believing believer. Activate the word of God by saying, yes, it does work. You stand by that word. Come rain, come sunshine. You know that the word of God works. You know that what God says is. It will not change. Now, if I can tell you something now, like I say something, you hear it, and then tomorrow you come back to me and say, well, I never said it. If you are the only one that heard it, there's no way you can prove that I said it. But if I wrote it down and give it to you, there's no way I can doubt it. It is what I said. It is written down. The word of God is written down in this book we call the Bible. He guaranteed it by writing it down. So God cannot say, I didn't say it. I'll say, Lord, but you put it here. This is what you said. And so he cannot doubt it. So if God said, by his stripes, I am healed, you are healed, believe it. He wrote it down. You can always take it to him and say, Lord, you said it, you wrote it down. So to be an unbelieving believer is your inability to activate what God has promised you. And if it doesn't work, it's your responsibility. He said it. He wrote it down. And he will confirm whatever he said if you will activate it. So if you take that card, the company sent you and activate it, and then take it to any store, no store will deny it because that store, that card has been activated. So don't be an unbelieving believer because by being that, you are refusing to activate the power of God in your life. You, you live a defeated life. You fail in everything because you have your card in your hand that you did not activate. You went to the grocery, you came back empty. Though you had the card in your hands, but you couldn't use it because you did not activate it. So for you to activate the power of God in your life, you must believe the word. You must speak the word. You must trust the word. That is the only way the word works. Yes. If you will believe it. Well, yes. Isn't that true? That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. I really hope you're listening with your heart because you, this is imp so important that if you allow the devil to steal this word from you, you, you will not like your life. They, look at this. The doctor gives you a bad report about your health. You have this. And God said, as a Christian, as a child of God, as his own righteous daughter or son, you are healthy. You do not have. You might be experiencing pain or something. That doesn't mean you have pain. That mean, when you say, I have, that means you have taken possession of that. Is that really what you want to say? When the doctors give you a bad report, say, well, I respect your, I respect what you said, but my God is well able to heal me from this. I am healed by his stripes. Right there in their ears. That's what I do. I say, this is not for me. I am the healed of the Lord. I Watch me. Next time you see me, you'll be surprised. Yes, you give them something to believe with you, that next time they see you, that thing that they said you have, you don't have it for sure. And it will be so. God will make it happen. So this is essentially what we are saying. Don't live a defeated life. As a child of God, you are not supposed to live a defeated life. Let your heart that you believe God with, now let that word that you believe Come out of your mouth, speak it, declare it over yourself, over any circumstance, anywhere, anytime. Without, why are you ashamed of the gospel of God, of the Lord Jesus? See, a lot of times people are ashamed to say what they believe. Only the Christians would do that. Look at everybody has come out of the closet. So why are we not coming out of, out of we own the world. We don't have to come out of the closet. We are not in the closet. We are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. See, until we start living what we believe, you will continue to be defeated. 
and the world will keep trampling on, on you. Refuse it. This is not your portion. Very, very good. Let us look at another scripture now before we continue. Let us look at the book of Matthew, chapter 28, um, this is, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, honey. Look at Mark chapter 16, this is 15 to 20. Hallelujah. Mark 16, 15 to 20. What does he say? Okay. And we are now going to look at what happens to those who believe. What did Jesus say? This is the word of Christ Jesus. What did he say to us if we are believers? Listen. And Jesus said unto them, his disciples, go ye into the world, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. See it? Go and preach. Number one, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned, condemned. Ooh. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them by any means. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Excellent. Let, let, let me come in here a little bit. When Jesus gave them that commission, go into all the world, preach the gospel. He told them everything they had to do. But he, tell them, he told them one thing else. He said, do not do it until you have received the Holy Ghost. He said, wait until you have received power from on high. What does that mean? When he said, go and say it to all the world. Because if they had gone then, it would not have been possible for the world to believe it or receive it. So he had to send the Holy Spirit into the world so that the Holy Spirit has not made it possible for every human being to be saved. So don't ask yourself, oh, I don't think this my brother will be saved. He's gone so far. Or I don't think my father will be saved. He's gone so far. I don't think my mother will be saved because she's gone too far. No. By the power of the Holy Spirit, every human being on this earth can be saved. That's the truth. Because the Holy Spirit has given us that power. Honey, isn't that true? <laughs> That's true. See, we, are, we, we need to run here because this is... Uh, Thank you very much. This is extremely important. We have to move faster because we have dwelt in this a little bit longer. Now, let's move. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, perfect. God has paid the price. So we can only go and do the will of God. Do the will of God. Let us do the will of God. That's what we need to do. And the effects of uh, unbelief is fear. The effects of unbelief is doubt. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, we have been reading that. Please read that, meditate on it. The fearful, the unbelieving, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now listen, do not take this lightly. You cannot suffer in this world and then go and suffer eternally in hell. So let us take it very seriously. So what happens to those who believe? They have the world in their hands. They can do all things now through Christ who strengthens them. That's what happens to you when you are a believer. But when you are an unbeliever, what are the facts? There's rifts in your family. You have problems all around you. The life, life becomes very difficult because the Bible has said it, that the just shall live by faith. If you are not living by faith, by believing God, you are causing problem for yourself. God cannot use you much because God can only use those who believe. He will ask you, do you believe? And if you say yes, it's okay now, let's go do it. So it's your responsibility to believe God. Now, honey, is there a solution to this delma or predicament of being an unbelieving believer? Yes, there is a solution indeed. And what is that solution? Change your heart. Change your mind. Because we do that always. In the things that in the things of God, in the word of God, when God says something, don't doubt it. Don't be afraid to claim what God said, to say what God said. So what is that? The first thing is because God has given you choice. 
He cannot take that choice from you. You have a, you have a choice. Choose to change from your yesterday uh, unbelief. Choose to believe God. Choose to say, Lord, I repent from my unbelief. I, I repent from fear and doubt. Help me. From now on, I propose in my heart to believe you, believe your word, and trust in you confidently. So help me, Holy Spirit. That's a stand that you need to take. And l listen, if you want this help, Holy Spirit is right there to help you. You have to be honest, be sincere. That's all God is looking for. So if your husband or if the spouse is misbehaving, now it's, it's your turn to say, I change from my wicked ways. I change to do the will of God. I change to love. I change to be a blessing. I change. So when you ch decide to change, then change will surely happen. Because Jesus said it. Turn from your wicked ways and come to Jesus. Follow him and you will not miss your way. Follow the word of God. Say it. Believe it. St stand on it. Stop wavering. Stop wavering. The days are going by fast. Wonderful. So what are we saying here? Or what, not what we. What is the word of God saying here? He said believe. Believe. What do you believe? You believe the word of God. But how can you believe what you don't know? That is why it is very important for you to soak yourself in the word of God. Read the Bible. The answer is right there as day and night. So if you read the word of the Lord and then there's a, a problem, you won't say, well, uh, I don't know if this is true. I, I doubt it. Like some people say today, uh, how do you know uh, uh, that's the right thing? Uh, there are different opinions. Let me tell you one thing. People contradict themselves, but they don't know they're contradicting themselves. In this United States of America where we are, we have what we call the constitution of the, of the country, of the nation. So if you are doing anything which is contrary to the constitution, you know it is wrong. Because the constitution says don't do it, or the constitution says do it. So if you, if you come to that and tell me, well, it depends on the individual's opinion. You cannot come to this country today and tell me that, oh, I'm doing this. It depends on the individual's opinion. No. What does the Constitution say about it? So to you, to say, well, people, every person's opinion, no. What does the Bible say about it? That's what matters. It's not anybody's opinion or, anybody, or what if any other person thinks. What does the word of God say about it? That's what stands. So don't say there are different opinions. No, there are no different opinions. It's what God said. That's what matters. So as a believer... To be effective, you must stand strong, soak yourself in the word of God, refuse any contradictory evidence. It doesn't matter what is around you. Because the word of the Lord overcomes. It doesn't matter how concrete the thing looks, the word of God will change it. If you do what? If you activate it by believing it. That's all it takes. Amen? Activating it and speaking it. Speak the word of God in confidence that he who is in you is greater than any challenge. He who is in you is greater than any problem. Amen. Now, remember this. Meditate on how much God loves you. Meditate on that. Close your eyes. Block off everything. And just remind yourself, God loves me. He that did not spare his only begotten son, but gave his son away for me, he loves me. He is my health. He is my healer. He is my El Shaddai, my great provider. You need to meditate on how much God loves you. Now, you can say, I love God, I love God. But really, that's, you really don't mean it. If you don't believe that God loves you so much that he does not want you to suffer, then you cannot say you love God. Love your neighbor. If you cannot love your neighbor, how can you love God? God is love. Love is the key thing here. Know that God loves you so much. He has paid the price for you to be healthy, for you to be prosperous, for you to be bold, for you to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. And it is our heritage. Our heritage. Meditate on, on the love of Christ. 
meditate on that. So we thank God for you today. We thank God that you're hearing this message. We thank God that after hearing this message, you will now be able to activate this word of God in your life by believing it and above all by speaking it. So if you are not a born again child of God, you cannot activate a card which is not sent in your name. So if a card is sent in the name of John, John Jones and then Mary uh, Adam picks it up, she cannot activate it because it doesn't belong to her. So only you can activate the word of God in you. The only way you can do it is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we are going to lead you in that now. In a very simple prayer. Just say, Dear Father, I know I'm a sinner. But I believe that you took flesh, you came into the world in the person of Jesus. And you died on the cross of Calvary for the whole mankind. For the whole mankind, oh Lord, you say, whosoever. And I have come today to accept this sacrifice that you made. I'm receiving Jesus Christ and I'm declaring that he is my savior and I'm confessing him as my Lord. Now, Father, forgive all my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Give me your Holy Spirit. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, let me be able to activate your word in my life. Father, I thank you. I believe I'm now born again. And I believe I'm now destined for heaven. I give you all the praise and all the glory. If you have said that, you are saved. That's what it takes. Very simple, but powerful. Amen? Amen. And remember, open the Bible and start reading from the New Testament. Read. Because readers are leaders. When you read, you know for sure what you have in Christ Jesus. Remember he said, Jesus said, all power, all authority is given unto me. Go ye therefore. So now you are one of those that will come, uh, that will join the, the mandate. Go ye therefore. Share what God has done for you. Share what the Lord has uh, helped you with. Testify of him. Testify. And he will never fail you. As you declare him, you, he will always back you up. So Jesus Christ, he loves you very much. Yes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He can never leave you nor nope. forsake you. He loves you. He loves you, and he wants you to stay fixed in him. Amen. And never be defeated. We love you too. Remain blessed.